we talk about hydroxyurea as, as being this mainstay of uh, historical um, mainstay of treatment for patients with polycythemia vera, I certainly think we're moving past that. We're seeing a lot more um, use of, of, of different agents uh, in the space. We're seeing a lot more excitement around the potential for disease modification. And so one of the things we wanted to, to review uh, in our recent publication is, is really how do we go about treating patients with hydroxyurea resistance or intolerance and, and what does the data say? And so, um, you know, I think we're moving into an era where, where there's there's certainly more options, right? We have clinical trials for polycythemia bear patients. We haven't always had that. Um, we certainly have newer and safer formulations of interferon that, that can be leveraged in this space. And, and then we're getting long-term data with JAK inhibitors such as ruxolitinib uh, for this space as well. And, and, and when we have these different options, we have to realize that these are not like, you know, similar treatments, right? They're very different. Uh, and so I think when we think about moving beyond hydroxyurea, we have to think about what goals are we trying to accomplish for the patient that's sitting in front of us? Are we trying to tackle things like uh, constitutional symptoms, splenomegaly, uh, excessive need for or need for excessive amounts of phlebotomies? Um, because that may push us down a different road than if we're looking at, at treating someone who's who's younger, whose really focus is, is disease modification, decreasing that mutant variant allele fraction of the JAK2 mutation. Uh, that may push us in a different direction. And, and so I think that, that understanding the goals of therapy, making this a shared decision with your patients is going to be quite important as we move into this kind of next era of treatment for polycythemia vera.